Let's talk about a monumental event in the Bitcoin ETF space. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust, IBIT, saw an astonishing $1 billion in trading volume within the first 20 minutes of trading on November 6th. That's incredible because as Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric pointed out on X, that's roughly what IBIT typically moves in an entire day. And it's just, it's not obviously just BlackRock either. Other Bitcoin ETFs are experiencing similar crazy volumes, making this a standout moment for Bitcoin in the ETF landscape. This surge in trading volume comes right after the US presidential election, where Donald Trump clinched the victory on November 5th. Trump's win has sent ripples through the crypto community, especially because he's known for being a crypto-friendly Republican who has expressed ambitions, uh, ambitions to make a America, the crypto capital of the world. This sentiment is fueling optimism that Bitcoin could see a significant price boost in the coming months. Speaking of optimism, analysts are buzzing with predictions that Bitcoin's price could surge to over $100,000 in the time Trump is inaugurated by January 20th. Head of research at Cooper.co told Cointelegraph that valuation models are bullish, suggesting that such a a dramatic increase is quite possible. This isn't just wishful thinking either. Historical trends and current political climates are aligning to make this a plausible scenario. But why the confidence? Well, Trump's administration is expected to take a more favorable stance towards cryptocurrencies, potentially easing regulatory pressures and fostering an environment uh, conductive uh, to crypto growth. Now, this contrasts sharply, uh, contrast sharply with the current administration under Joe Biden and Vice President Kamara Harris, where the SEC has taken a more aggressive regulatory approach, bringing over 100 regulatory actions against crypto companies. This shift in regulatory outlook is a big deal for the entire crypto market. Now, let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at Bitcoin's dominance in the ETF space this year. Bitcoin has dominated the ETF landscape in 2024, accounting for six of the top 10 most successful launches. Now, Nate uh, highlighted this trend in a recent X post, emphasizing Bitcoin's uh, continued strength and popularity among investors. Furthermore, asset managers are not just stopping at Bitcoin. In 2024, there's been a flurry of regulatory filings for uh, to basically list ETFs uh, holding you know, altcoins like Solana and others, right? These filings have seen uh, as call cool options for a Trump victory, meaning they're betting that Trump's win will create a more favorable environment for these crypto assets. Now, they also noted on October 25th that these filings uh, could be a uh, could see a significant uptick if Trump does take office. So uh, further boosting, you know, the crypto market. Now, the, quest, the quite bigger question is, how is the community reacting to all of these developments uh, on platforms like X and on Reddit? The sentiment is a mix of excitement and, of course, some skepticism. Many crypto enthusiasts are thrilled about the potential for Bitcoin to skyrocket, viewing BlackRock's massive ETF volume as a strong indicator of institutional confidence and future growth. You'll see uh, posts like Bitcoin to the moon with BlackRock's ETF and excited for what Trump's presidency means for crypto flooding in, reflecting a positive outlook. However, there are some cautious voices remaining, uh, reminding everyone that, that the crypto market is notoriously volatile. Comments such as 100k Bitcoin question mark possible, but let's stay realistic and great volume, but watch out for market fluctuations. Highlight the balanced perspective within the community. So I guess what's the big takeaway from all of this? Well, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF surge is, uh, and Trump's you know election uh, victory are of course creating a perfect storm for positive sentiment and institutional support for Bitcoin. Like analysts, uh, or with analysts like uh, various people predicting uh, that Bitcoin could reach $100,000 by January, we'll talk more about that in a moment. That the future is looking incredibly promising. However, it's also very important to and essential to stay informed and remain 
cautious where possible. While the regulatory environment might become more favorable under Trump, the crypto market remains volatile and influenced by, you know, a whole host of different factors. Diversifying your investments and keeping an eye on market trends will be key to navigating these uh, exciting yet unpredictable times. Now, speaking of optimism, analysts are buzzing with predictions that Bitcoin's price could surge to a draw dropping $100,000 by the time that Trump is inaugurated on January 20th. Now, there are, of course, um, you know, the Lots of analysts and the head of research over at Cooper.co told Cointelegraph uh, that valuation models are bullish, suggesting that uh, such dr a dramatic price increase is very much possible. Now, this isn't just wishful thinking. Historical trends and the current political climate are aligning to make these possible scenarios. So... Why is everyone so confident and what is all this confidence about? Well, Trump's administration is expected to take a more favorable stance towards cryptocurrencies, potentially easing regulatory pressures and fostering an environment conductive of crypto growth. Now, these uh, contrast sharply, of course, with the current administration, Joe Biden and obviously Kamara Harris, where the SEC has taken a more aggressive regulatory approach, bringing over 100 regulatory actions against crypto companies. So, you know, if we zoom out a little bit and we take a look at the Bitcoin's uh, dominance in the ETF space, uh, we can see that, you know, Bitcoin ETFs have dominated uh, you know, the landscape in 2024, accounting for six out of the 10 so most successful launches, right? And we spoke about that just a moment ago. Now, furthermore, asset managers are not just stopping at Bitcoin. They are, of course, looking at other assets for ETFs, such as Ethereum, which we've seen, Solana, even XRP has come up in conversations. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing things like Chainlink either. These filings are seen as you know fantastic cool options or um, buy options options for you know Trump's victory within the uh, market basically betting that when Trump gets into office we're going to see a more favorable regulatory environment for crypto assets okay and this is something that we were talking about just a moment ago now with bitcoin trading at new record highs of you know over $75,000 on Binance all eyes are now on key support levels that bulls need to protect to sustain this upward momentum checkmate uh, the uh, Promixpius uh, analyst and founder of um, Check on Chain points uh, out that Bitcoin's bent fork structure is crucial in understanding its price of behavior. Now, according to Checkmate, Bitcoin has reclaimed its classic bull support components, such as the 200-day simple moving average, that's the SMA, and um, that was at $63,546. And of course, the short-term holder cost basis, STH-CB, at $64,337. These levels are critical because they represent areas where buying interest is strong and is strong enough to prevent the price from falling further. Protecting these support zones is essential for Bitcoin bulls to maintain their momentum, especially amidst any kind of ongoing election related volatility that we may see. Now, hitting closer to home, order block liquidity data from Coinglass shows that the bulk of ask clusters are around 75,500 as Bitcoin tested uncharted territory. To the downside, there's noticeable buying interest at $73,000. Uh, with bids laddering down towards the $70,000 mark. However, not everyone is convinced about the rapid upside. You've got Keith Allen, co-founder of Material Indicators, express some skepticism, saying that DGENs are DGENing in uh, while examining the order book data. This reflects a cautious sentiment among some market participants who are wary of the swift price movements and the potential for a significant retracement. And we'll talk more about my charts and my predictions in a moment as well, which I'll kind of layer into a little bit of that. Now, as ding to the conversation, Cointelegraph reported expectations that the election-based price fever may soon dissipate after hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto liquidations. Now, Lucky Char Ape, an analyst, uh, or has an account on X anyway, forecasted a dump and pump scenario, and I don't think they're too far wrong here, uh, following the vote count. Now, according to the forecast, the Bitcoin USD um, should recover towards around $70,000 after the initial surge. And um, again, 
I'll tell you what I think is going on in the charts in a moment. Now, material uh, indicators chimed in stating that the volatility we've seen this week is extending in both directions uh, in indicating that the election related narratives are getting obliterated today. Now, of course, this suggests that while Bitcoin is experiencing significant upward movements, there's also a substantial risk of a sharp decline, highlighting the unpredictability and the unpredictably unpredictable, if I talk today, nature of the crypto market right now this how um, you know is something that we need to kind of consider and obviously need to kind of really take into consideration it's not necessarily all upward price movements so how is the crypto community reacting to all of these developments well over on platforms like x and on reddit the sentiment of course is mixed there are a lot of people that are super excited and of course there's still those cautious voices out there many bitcoin enthusiasts are thrilled about the potential for a massive price surge viewing blackrock's etf volumes and trump's election win as strong indicators of institutional confidence and of course future growth you'll see posts like bitcoin to the moon and with trump's win btc is unstoppable reflecting very positive sentiment and positive outlooks however there are some cautious voices reminding everyone that the crypto market is notoriously volatile comments such as 100k bitcoin possible but let's stay realistic and great volume but watch for market fluctuations highlight the bit uh, a balanced kind of perspective within the community this blend of optimism and caution is typical in the crypto space, where high rewards often come with high risks. It's essential for investors to stay informed and consider both the positive catalysts and the potential downsides. Let's go ahead and jump into the charts and I'll share my thoughts and opinions as to where I think that price action is heading next. Okay, guys, here we have a Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're on the one day Binance chart here and you can see this good growth that we were looking at yesterday. You can see here that we kind of, I mean, I'm not a big fan of trend lines, but you can kind of see that we tested this trend line and pushed above it and you can argue that maybe we're turning into support now this is all great and everything um but unless we have a major move where we can actually see this um this kind of idea that this is actually now broken and becomes to a parallel channel a parallel channel would be good um as this currently still sits i can still argue that this is an ascending wedge which is not a bullish pattern okay so we want to turn it into a parallel channel a parallel channel would be good um at the moment we don't really see that so you know it's one of those we're going to double-edged sword kind of scenario here okay so still a bearish kind of ascending wedge pattern but you know with all big major moves in price we usually see some cooling off this is very much in line with our expectations and what we've been kind of talking about we were talking going long into this but we never got the entry because we didn't drop down as expected either on the smaller time frames um but that being said we saw pretty good growth here new all-time highs uh, with that high coming in yesterday at $76,400 to the penny on the Binance Bitcoin USDT pairing. Now, when we take a look at some of these other indicators, we can see some ground for concern. Now, these concerns, of course, are longer term. They're not instantaneous. OK, so we actually do see some momentum still supporting a new all time high for Bitcoin, um, you know, new today and potentially, in, you know, higher than the $76,400 on the smaller time frames, the one hour time frame, for example, we can still see bullish momentum in there. On the one hour time frame, though, we can see that we're heading quite fast towards the overbought area. And every time that we do come up here, we do see price kind of cooling off. OK, so obviously it's the stochastic RSI is not an indication of price movement. But what it is an indication of is the sentiment, is the momentum going into the price action. And with a rapidly moving or fast moving stochastic RSI, it typically shows us weakness into that move. Now, this particular stochastic RSI that we see here is moving at an OK pace. It's not rapidly moving where we can't we can see a lack of momentum going into this this all time high. Actually, there's a reasonable amount of momentum going into this all time high. But as we do go up a little bit higher, we are to be expecting a bit of a cooling off. OK, so kind of in line with what the other analysts uh, are saying here is that, yes, it's great to see all of this, but we can't get caught up thinking that we're going straight to 100,000 USD uh, for BTC. I would love that to be the case, but I don't suspect that's actually what is going to happen here.
Okay, so we will be looking for a calling off. And as a lot of people are saying, there's a lot of buying orders at 73 dollars and $70,000. So we could be calling off towards those ranges. We're looking for good support. Obviously, uh, the 200 EMA on the daily time frame sits at 62000 The um, 50 EMA, the 50 SMA, they're sat around the 66000 on the EMA and 65000 on the SMA. So there's a lot of strong support to be found within the exponential moving averages and the simple moving averages. I'm not concerned about those. If we take a look at the divergence indicator, here we can see that we are on the relative strength index up in the higher range. Okay, again, look, we've been up here a few times, and every time we have come up here, we have seen a bit of a drop in the price action. So again, the market is going to be looking for calling off. What this is telling us is that momentum is good. It's been pushing up. We've seen new all-time highs, but as momentum pushes up like this, the buying pressure starts to ease off. They start to get exhausted, and the sellers start to take control of the market. Okay, so as the demand for buying starts to ease, we'll start to see more buy, uh, selling pressure starting to come into the market, and you'll see this nice healthy correction. Okay, that's what the relative strength index here is telling me, that we're starting to move up towards the areas where we are likely to see the buying pressure start to get exhausted. Now, what's really interesting is when we start coming into the MACD histogram. Now, the MACD histogram, as I've noted on many occasions, is still not strong enough to be supporting these moves to the upside. Okay, if I take a look at this on just our daily time frame, we have, of course, higher highs on price action. But whilst we have higher highs on price action, we can see lower highs on our histogram. Now, this unfortunately is bearish divergence. Now, it's not going to time the market, it cannot do that. But what it is telling us is that as we push up higher and higher and higher, the buying pressure is getting lower and lower and lower. Okay, that is a bearish divergence. It shows that the buying momentum is starting to get exhausted. And it is showing us that we are likely to start to see and start should start thinking about a nice healthy correction in the market. Okay, so we're seeing some good moves. We've got some new all time highs. It's great for that for that to continue, I do suspect we probably will continue up a little bit further. Maybe we can hit into 78,000 somewhere in that range would be very nice. But I think afterwards we should be expecting a bit of a cooling off when it comes to BTC. And the ranges that I would be looking at would really be in that 73 to $70,000 level. And I do think that is really where we want to be pocketing out our kind of next areas for accumulation. Uh, and obviously this is an area that has to hold in my opinion. Let's go ahead and just pull that across here. You can see that this was previous area of resistance, right? And um, so basically this range is coming in at 68,318 to 73,777. Okay, so as you can see, okay, we moved up into this range back in uh, March 2024, right? We can see that we got rejected here. We pushed back up, we got rejected, we pushed back up, we got rejected, back up, rejected, back up, rejected, back up, and rejected. Then we broke through it yesterday. Okay, now that breakout essentially tells us that we can push up. And what we want to do here is we want to call off and we want to turn previous resistance into a strong support area. Okay, so if we can nail this, Bitcoin is going to be on a fantastic journey in 2025 towards those targets. And I do suspect, you know, 100, 110, $120,000 BTC. And if we're lucky enough, we might even be able to push it out towards $130,000. Do I suspect that we're likely to go higher than that? No, but you know, I'd like to be wrong about that as well. As you can kind of see here, we have our line, our trend line. This does kind of top out towards $130,000. My kind of low end expectations is 101 to 118,000. So that's kind of where I'm going to be thinking about Bitcoin's price heading in 2025. This little pattern that we're in right now, I do think we're going to be calling off, finding support on the 50 EMAs um, and potentially even the 200 EMA. Um, hopefully, we don't lose that low around 68,000 if we can hold it then I think we're in a really strong position to see some good growth here for BTC and it will continue to rally up even higher in my opinion. But of course, guys, it is just my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as I see it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below or join us in our free Discord server and we can continue the conversations down there. If you found this video helpful and informative, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, check that video out right there. It's not one that you want to miss.